Well, welcome back. We're now uh, working on section uh, 3.3, the derivatives of the exponential and logarithmic functions. So this chapter is going to be about more memorizing of derivative functions. <coughs> Sorry. So um, you've got uh, the log base A of X. The derivative of the log base A of X is going to be equal to 1 over X times the natural log of A on the bottom. And the reason for this guy is, this is our main rule for logarithms, the derivative of the natural log of x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. Therefore, the derivative of any other log, log base a of x, is 1 over x times the natural log of the original base a. So these guys are very similar, but this is any other log base 2, log base 3, whatever it happens to be. So if I had log base 3 of x, that's 1 over x times the natural log of 3 versus the original natural log of x. The natural log of x, something you need to have memorized, it's 1 over x. But, um, also, we have our exponential forms over here. And the most important exponential form is the derivative of e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. e to the x is the only function in the universe that it's its own derivative, besides 0. The derivative of 0 is 0, of course, but the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, if you happen to have another uh, base, like for example 2 to the x instead of e, well you can take the derivative of that guy as well, but you have to have that same type of adjusting factor like we do over here with uh, other logs besides the natural log. So the derivative of a to the x is a to the x times the natural log of a. So an example would be the derivative of 2 to the x would be 2 to the x times the natural log of 2. Now. These are your basic forms, but now remember this. When it comes to these derivative and exponential forms, there are actually two rules here. There's a rule, and there is the chain rule version of that rule. So let me go over here and talk about the basic rules. For example, if y equals the natural log of x, then the derivative is 1 over x. Pure memorization. But then you have the chain rule version of it. If you have the natural log of something other than x, an entire function, natural log of a function, well, the chain rule is derivative of the outside, inside stays the same time derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the natural log of a function is going to be 1 over the function times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of the function. So it's 1 over f of x times f prime of x. And some teachers like to write this as f prime of x over f of x. It's the same thing, but I like to write it like this because I want you guys to see it's that natural log derivative, it's that 1 over function bit. So you got that 1 over the function times the derivative of the function. Now, if you happen to have y equals any other log, log base a of x, well, we just have memorized that the derivative of log base a of x is 1 over x times uh, the natural log of a in the denominator. But if you have the chain rule version of it, if you have the log base a of a function, then my derivative is going to be 1 over the function times the natural log of that original base a, so it looks the same, but chain rule times the derivative of the inside, times f prime of x. So for every rule you get from this point on, you get the rule and you get the chain rule version of it. We keep on going. For the exponentials, if y equals e to the x, remember e to the x is its only function that it's its its, its own derivative, which means derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But that being said, if we happen to have y equals e to a function there, a chain rule version of this, then y prime would be e to the function times the derivative of the exponent. And a set of two more rules here. If I have y equals a to the x, we have it memorized that the derivative is a to the x times the adjusting factor natural log of a. It comes from the same exponential style formula. And of course, you have the chain rule version of it. a raised to a function, then the derivative is going to be a to that function times the natural log of the original base a times the derivative of the exponent. So for every rule we have in this chapter and for future chapters, every time we take a derivative of a function, there's the basic rule, and then there are equivalent chain rule versions of each rule. So, so let's go over here and let's take a look at some of my examples to get this section started. So we're going to be going back and taking a bunch of 
derivatives and doing applications of those derivatives just like we've done with uh, pretty much the rest of chapter 2. So if, let's take a look at this example. If f of x equals 5 log base 7 of x, the question is find the derivative. So the derivative, always labeling it, 5 is a constant, leave it alone. This is that classic log base a of x. So the formula is going to be times 1 over x times the natural log of the original base on the log, which was 7. And there's my formula. You can clean them up, of course, and you end up getting 5 divided by x times the natural log of 7. I want the denominator there. Another example, number 2. If y equals 17e to the x plus 5x minus the sine of x, what's the derivative? Well, y prime would be 17 is a constant. Constants hold over. What's the derivative e to the x? That's the function. That's It's its own derivative. So the derivative e to the x is e to the x plus, and we keep on going. What's the derivative of 5x? is clearly 5. And minus the derivative of sine x is cosine of x. And there's my derivative. This next guy, making sure you guys have these other formulas memorized. This function is y equals negative 5 times the tangent of x. y equals negative 5 times the tangent of x. Well, that's part of this e to the x rule, but it's actually the chain rule. If y equals e to a function, then the derivative is e to the function times the derivative of the exponent. So, here we go. Labeling is everything, so we're talking about the derivative. So y prime equals, derivative e to a function is e to the function. So e, just recopy, e to the 5 times the tangent of x times the derivative of the exponent. Well, negative 5 is a constant. Leave it alone. What is the derivative of tangent of x? Absolutely. You have it memorized. It's secant squared of x. So there's the derivative of e to the negative 5x. The derivative of e to the negative 5x is e to the negative 5 excuse me, e to the negative 5 tangent of x, the derivative of that is e to the negative 5 tangent of x times negative 5 secant squared of x. The derivative of e to a function is e to a function times the derivative of the exponent. Well, how hard can we make it? Well, welcome to this chapter. Well, we're going to go back and apply some of those rules you learned from last chapter. For example, this problem. y equals e to the negative 5x times cosine of 3x. So, e to the negative 5x times the cosine of 3x. Clearly, that's a product, so I'm going to use the product rule. Draw the first times the second plus the first time draw the second. We'll draw the first. What's the derivative of e to the negative 5x? Well, that's e to the negative 5x, e to a function, e to a function. But anything other than x, you got to use the chain rule version of it. So the derivative of e to the negative 5x is e to the negative 5x times negative 5. I'm going to derivative the exponent. So this is the derivative of the first times the second, cosine of 3x, plus the first, e to the negative 5x, times the derivative of the second. Well, what's the derivative of the cosine of uh, 3x? Well, the derivative of cosine, chain rule again, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. The inside, 3x stays the same, times the derivative of the inside, which is times 3. Well, of course, you probably want to clean this up and make it look good. So y prime would be negative 5 e to the negative 5x cosine of 3x minus 3, negative 3 there, pulled out front, e to the negative 5x sine of 3x. And there's my solution. And again, practicing some of these other rules. Here's a nice one. If f of x equals the natural log of x, what's the derivative? Well, again, labeling is everything, so f prime of x would be, and we have it memorized. The derivative of natural log of x is straight up 1 over x. But then we have to make it a little more difficult. Let's take a look at this guy. So f of x equals 3x to the 6 times the natural log of 3x squared plus 4. So taking the derivative, first pause, look at it, and ask yourself what rule? 3x to the 6 times natural log of 3x squared plus 4. Clearly, it's a product rule again. Derivative the first times the second plus the first time derivative the second. So, derivative the first guy, derivative 3x to the 6 is going to be 18x to the fifth. Derivative the first times the second, the natural log of 3x squared plus 4. Plus the first, 3x to the 6 times the derivative of the second. Now, 
derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. This isn't natural log of x. This is natural log of a function. So we have to use the chain rule version of natural log. Remember, derivative of natural log of a function is 1 over the function times the root of the function. So derivative of natural log of 3x squared plus 4 is 1 over 3x squared plus 4 times the derivative of the inside. Derivative of 3x squared plus 4 is 6x. Now, of course, you probably want to clean this up and get that back of the book multiple choice answer look. So f prime of x would be 18x to the fifth times the natural log of 3x squared plus 4. But here you can combine. When you're combining multiplying fractions, multiply the numerators. 3 times uh, 6 is uh, plus 18. x to the sixth times x is x to the seventh divided by 3x squared plus 4. And there's my solution. So a big part of what we're going to be doing in this particular section, honestly, is learning the basic rules of exponential logs and their chain rule versions. But then, of course, uh, doing a more expansion of applications of this stuff. Also trying to take derivatives as these things get harder in terms of the product rule, chain rule, and quotient rule all intermixed to take derivative of much harder stuff. So it's a very interesting chapter, but we're back to taking the derivative of much harder functions, in this case the exponential and logs. I hope this has been helpful and I will see you on the next video.